This is the M2 MacBook Air, and by now, you all probably know to get this model instead of the 13-inch MacBook Pro, which most of you should just avoid as the Air has a lot of benefits over the 13-inch Pro. So because of that, we're going to compare the M2 Air against the 14-inch base MacBook Pro. As based on the comments from our previous video, a lot of you were torn between these two models, and I gotta say, I am very torn myself. Like, I've been using a MacBook Pro 14-inch myself, and I've honestly been thinking about selling that and switching to the MacBook Air, but for some very specific reason, I cannot do it. Which I'm going to address throughout this video. There are seven things that I want to compare between the two, so let's start off with the design. So when it comes to the color options, we have four options on the MacBook Air versus just two on the MacBook Pro. Now, out of these four colors, my favorite one by far is the new Midnight on the MacBook Air, as it just looks super sleek. It's very close to a matte black. The only downside with it is that it's very, very fingerprinty, um, and it also scuffs very easily. Now, they both have a very similar design style with uh, these rounded corners. However, the MacBook Air is significantly thinner at 1.13 centimeters compared to 1.55. It's as noticeable when it's closed as well as when they are open. And the Air is also much lighter at 1.24 kilograms compared to 1.6 on the 14-inch MacBook Pro. Like, honestly, holding the Air in my hand feels like holding a 12.9-inch iPad Pro, whereas holding the 14-inch model feels like holding a 15-inch or even 16-inch laptop. This thing is very heavy. The only three things that are nicer on the MacBook Pro are, I would say, the black keyboard tray versus the uh, color-matched uh, tray on the MacBook Air. Then the bezels, which are actually thinner, noticeably, on the MacBook Pro, and the notch is essentially the same on both. And then the MacBook Pro also has a couple of extra ports on the right-hand side. We have an HDMI, an extra Thunderbolt port, and an SD card slot. Another design difference is the overall footprint. As you can tell, the MacBook Air is shorter, and uh, it's also not as wide as the 14-inch. Now, when it comes to the displays, there are a lot of differences here. The first one is the display size. We have a 13.6-inch panel on the Air compared to a 14.2-inch panel on the 14-inch Pro. And you can already see that uh, on The Verge, for example, we can see a bit more of the articles compared to uh, the MacBook Air because of that larger display. Now, another difference is in terms of the overall sharpness of the display. So the MacBook Pro has a high resolution display and also higher PPI of 254 compared to 224 on the MacBook Air. What this means is that out of the box, the default scaling for the MacBook Pro is gonna be crazy, crazy sharp. Whereas on the MacBook Air, to get the sharpest image, you have to scale down to 1280 by 832. Another big difference between the two is the fact that we have a mini LED display on the 14-inch compared to a regular LCD on the MacBook Air. So when you're watching a movie at night, the blacks will be perfect on the Pro compared to this grayish level of blacks on the Air. So this is, I would say, the biggest difference display-wise between the two. Another big difference is the presence of the 120Hz ProMotion refresh rates on the Pro compared to just 60Hz on the MacBook Air. And having used the Pro for so long, I gotta say, the air does look especially bad <laughs> at 60 hertz. And then we have the brightness difference. So out of the box, they can both go up to 500 nits when you're watching SDR content, but then the Pro can go up to 1000 sustained or 1600 peak when you're watching HDR. Or if you use an app like Vivid, uh, you can enable that higher brightness on the MacBook Pro all the time, which is huge for when you're using it outdoors. And then the last difference is when it comes to external display support. So the MacBook Air only supports one, whereas the MacBook Pro supports two. And this is actually the main reason why I cannot switch to the MacBook Air because I have two displays at work. Now, when it comes to the speakers, we have four speakers on the Air, which are actually under the keyboard. Whereas on the MacBook Pro, we have six speakers with force canceling woofers. And as you can see, we have separate grills for them. Wow, the difference was just huge. Like on its own, the air is still pretty good, but like when you compare it to the 14 inch, the difference is just night and day. And now this is a camera and the microphone test on the new M2 MacBook Air. And now this is a camera and a microphone test on the 14 inch MacBook Pro. So they both have 1080p sensors and they're both pretty bad, <laughs> but for different reasons. The air was very noisy, but then the Pro, um, I don't know, the, the colors were just off. If you look at this area here, it was very blue. So let me know in the comments what you guys think. Now, in terms of the battery, Apple claims an 18 hour battery life on the MacBook Air compared to 17 hours on the MacBook Pro. But honestly, don't expect anywhere near that from the MacBook Pro, especially if you push the system a lot. I'm using the M1 Max model myself, which is more power hungry, and I'm getting about 
five hours based on my usage, which is not great. Uh, the Amon Pro base model will last you for longer than that, but don't expect anywhere near 18 or 17. In terms of charging, they both support MagSafe, but only the Air comes with color matched cables. On the MacBook Pros, the MagSafe cable only comes in silver, so if you get a space gray model, it won't match. Also, with the MacBook Pro, you can charge it from either side, and you can charge it up to 50% in 30 minutes right out of the box. With the MacBook Air, you need to buy Apple's more powerful 67 watt charger. But more on the MacBook Air versus the 14 inch MacBook Pro comparison right after this. This video is sponsored by ESR and their new lineup of Halo Lock chargers featuring innovative CryoBoost cooling tech to enable the fastest magnetic charging available whilst using your phone. This 3-in-1 charging stand is the ultimate bedside charger, offering you space for a MagSafe enabled phone, wirelessly charging your AirPods and even your Apple Watch too. Combining a phone cooling fan and heat dissipating components, ESR offers the fastest and the coolest charge at times like when you're watching a video. And this 2-in-1 charging stand also brings the fastest MagSafe charging available and has a special space for your AirPods. Oh, and they've even got this car charger too, so that you can quickly and easily navigate when driving with your phone held securely in place whilst charging. They're all super useful, so check them all out by using the link below. And now, back to the video. Now, let's move on to the performance. In terms of the specs, we have the M2 chip inside the MacBook Air compared to the M1 Pro inside the 14-inch MacBook Pro, both uh, with the following configurations. You can also bump the MacBook Pro way more, up to 64 gigs of RAM compared to 24 on the Air, up to 8 terabytes of storage compared to 2, and then also up to 10 CPU cores compared to 8 and up to 32 GPU cores. Also, in case you want to see how the higher-end MacBook Air compares to all the other devices, including the M1 Air from before and the M2 Pro, we have the 16 gigs of RAM version and the 512 and 10-core GPU coming in just a few days. Right, so let's start off with some benchmarks, starting off with a disk speed test. And as you can probably tell, the MacBook Pro is significantly faster here. So we have over 3.3 gigabytes per second write compared to 1.4 on the MacBook Air and almost 5 gigabytes per second read compared to just 1.3 on the air. So let's see how this impacts the actual transfer speeds. So copying 18 gigabytes from our external SSD took 46 seconds on the MacBook Air compared to 26 seconds on the MacBook Pro. So the MacBook Pro was almost twice as fast. Then we ran Cinebench over a period of 10 minutes and the M2 MacBook Air got 8,043 points compared to 9,552 on the 14 inch MacBook Pro. So that is 1.18 times faster on the MacBook Pro. When it comes to the temperatures, the MacBook Air reached 105 degrees, which is pretty insane. Uh, the MacBook Pro got quite hot as well, up to 94, but keep in mind that the Pro does have active cooling, whereas the MacBook Air does not. Then in Lightroom, we imported 228 images consisting of multiple RAW formats and TIFFs, up to 80 megapixels in size, and the Air took 37 seconds to import compared to just 8 seconds on the MacBook Pro. That is 4.6 times faster. We then made a few changes to one of the images and then pasted those changes to all the other ones. This took 60 seconds on the MacBook Air compared to 59 on the Pro, so basically the same. Now, exporting all of these images in full resolution took 30 minutes and 36 seconds on the Air compared to 9 minutes and 38 seconds on the MacBook Pro, so the Pro was 3.17 times faster. And then when we exported compressed images, uh, this took 17 minutes and 52 seconds on the Air compared to 4 minutes and 34 seconds on the Pro. So the Pro was 3.91 times faster. So yeah, if you're working with large files and Lightroom especially, the MacBook Pro is significantly faster than the Air. Then we tested Blender using the classroom scene and uh, the Cycles CPU render. This took 14 minutes and 28 seconds on the MacBook Air compared to 12 minutes and 12 seconds on the MacBook Pro. So the difference here was much smaller than I was expecting, just 1.18 times faster on the MacBook Pro. Also, while doing this, the Air lost 11% battery compared to 13% on the MacBook Pro. Now, doing the same render but using the GPU to render this, uh, was significantly faster than before, so the Air only took 5 minutes and 55 seconds, while the Pro took 3 minutes and 49 seconds, so this time the Pro was 1.55 times faster. And they both lost 4% here. Next up we tested Final Cut Pro. More specifically, I have a 15 minute 4K project here, which was actually our uh, one of our latest camera comparisons, and the M2 Air took 15 minutes and 52 seconds to export this in H264 compared to just 16 minutes and 8 seconds on the MacBook Pro. 
So the MacBook Pro was 3.15 times faster than the Air. Also, the Air lost 32% battery compared to just 18% on the MacBook Pro. Then, using Compressor, we converted an H.265 file to ProRes 4K, a 5-minute clip. And this took 1 minute and 20 seconds on the MacBook Air compared to 1 minute and 14 seconds on the MacBook Pro. So the difference here was very minor. Now, doing the same thing, but this time with a 6-minute 6K file, took 2 minutes and 10 seconds on the MacBook Air compared to 2 minutes and 19 seconds on the MacBook Pro. So this is the only time, by the way, when the MacBook Pro was actually slower than the Air. Also, the MacBook Air didn't lose any battery. The MacBook Pro lost 1%. And now let's test up Logic. So here I have a project containing 162 different tracks. Uh, at the moment, the system is just you know, it crashes, it cannot play all of them. So I'm just gonna delete a number of tracks until they can both play the project in real time. So the empty MacBook Air could play back 70 tracks, while the 14 inch could play back 118 tracks. So that's significantly better than the Air. If you're using Logic and you just work with loads of tracks, then getting the 14 inch model is a much better choice. And then we tried some gaming. So this is World of Warcraft and it's one of the only games that run natively on Apple Silicon. And at native resolution and everything basically maxed out, uh, the MacBook Air got between 35 and 42 frames per second. So that's an average of 38.5. However, the MacBook Air throttles heavily after just a few minutes. Uh, it ends up losing up to 25% of its performance uh, in just 30 minutes. Now on the 14 inch with the exact same settings, uh, we were getting an average frame rate of 71.5. So between 63 to 80. So the MacBook Pro was 1.85 times faster. And I think one of the advantages of the MacBook Pro is also the fact that you have that ProMotion 120 Hz display. So if you're getting frame rates over 60, those are actually visible uh, on the MacBook Pro. And then we also tested Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is not a native Apple Silicon game, but it's one that has been really well optimized. Uh, it also uses Metal. And on literally maxed out settings, the M2 MacBook Air got 13 frames per second, whereas the 14 inch got 27. So that's twice as fast on the 14 inch Pro. Okay, so in the end, which one should you go for? Well, obviously in terms of the portability and design, the Air is a much, much better choice. But if you care about the display a lot and you watch a lot of movies and for entertainment, then the MacBook Pro is significantly better. Plus the speakers are also miles better than on the Air. And if you care about performance, again, the base Pro is going to be between twice to even four times as fast as the base MacBook Air. If you want a game on the side, once again, the MacBook Pro is going to be significantly better here. Now, you should be aware that there is a significant price difference between the two. So the Air costs $1,200 compared to 2,000 on the 14-inch MacBook Pro. However, the moment you upgrade the Air with the same amount of RAM and storage as the MacBook Pro, so 16 gigabytes and 512, then the Air will cost $1,700. And at that point, you got to ask yourselves, is it worth paying $300 more to get everything that the 14-inch has to offer? And I think, yes, definitely. Oh, and if you want to see how a higher-end configuration of the Air with 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigabytes of storage, and the 10-core GPU compares uh, to the previous Air and just different devices, then stay tuned for our next video because that's what we're getting in a couple of days and we'll be able to answer all of your questions. So yeah, stay tuned for that video. I'm Daniel, this is Zenof Tech and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenof Tech, sending out. Cheers.